Once in a while I receive a phone call from a fellow co collector, and this happened uh, not that long ago, and I was alerted to the availability of what this fellow collector called the most unique semi-automatic 22 of all time. So a high praise for a BSA, Birmingham Small, Birmingham Small Arms product, and it's called the Ralock. It's spelled R-A-L-O-C-K, and I knew nothing about these rifles, but this other collector knew all about them. And he said that there were very few made, something like 5,000. Don't quote me on any of this stuff. It could be way off. Although um, I do agree with him. It's, it's a, one of the few times where superlatives um, are warranted. This is an astonishing gun. So first of all, <clears throat> you have a look at it. Uh, I picked it up. No ejection port in the top. No ejection port in the bottom. Uh, obviously, this looks like a browning. So that's probably where the ammunition goes. And then it has this strange uh, trigger guard lever apparatus. Anyway, um, I'll explain to you how it works, but it, it truly is, uh, to me anyway, in my collection, and in my experience, the most unique semi-automatic 22. The quality of the materials is first class, as you would expect for from anything from England or the United Kingdom. And what I did is actually set up a funny little arrangement here in the studio. I think I have everybody on the uh, uh, photo side of the crew nervous, but everything's entirely controlled and safe. So I preloaded this um, 22 with this Aguila uh, subsonic ammo, which is a superb ammunition. It's uh, marketed by a firm in Texas, but it's made in Mexico. It's another story. I actually have a lot to say about that ammo. Uh, but anyway, we'll get back to this uh, RAL lock, which I presume means radial lock. But anyway, you'll see what's going on here. So when I closed the action there, which was very simple, I just raised this. I actually cock the action and um, everything's entirely safe like I said and controlled there's a safety on the top of the action here easy to understand so we'll just fire one two and three three didn't go so who knows what happened in the action maybe I even forgot to load um, now we lower the and there are the empties let's see if a loaded round is in there no I guess I only loaded two Anyway, um, what's cool about this gun is, well, partly that it doesn't throw out the empties. It waits until you open the lever at the bottom of the action. And it's a takedown design. So where should I begin? I guess we'll start with the magazine tube. You can see in the back, just like the browning. So we simply turn that and remove the magazine tube. And that comes out and actually I noticed I didn't have it entirely locked and anyway it still fired two shots so there probably th is a third shell in here let's check it uh, nothing came out and then you lift this this is the coolest thing you lift this I don't know lever or or block and the barrel simply pulls out of the receiver it's tight as you would expect and there it is and there's the shell that didn't go off. So I'm presuming that it didn't go off because it's a subsonic round which is actually um, completely understandable. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with this gun. In the studio I didn't want to use a full power 22 long rifle and I ran a few test shots and actually fired quite a few times and they all fired but of course they circumstances have to wait for filming until they don't work anyway there's the action and uh, here's the other cool thing so you just flip this around I'm right-handed and this component lifts right out so you have the action which is all steel beautifully made this won't mean all that much to you on camera but owning one of these is something else. Now you'll probably wonder where's the bolt and where's the hammer or where's the striker. 
So it's all here, but it's not readily apparent. And um, I'll show you the base of one of the shells. No, the one that didn't go off didn't get hit. So we'll, we'll close this action and pull the trigger. And this is actually the firing pin right there. So when you see this, um, you know automatically this 22 fires from an open bolt. And I think the reason they call it the rattle lock is probably some kind of reference to a radial lock. And when you pull the trigger, um, the rim fire round is fired by effectively two firing pins. So very simple action, amazingly expensive to manufacture. I truly don't know how they made these guns um, affordable at all. That'll tip over. And this is beautifully machined, everything the way it should be. And I fired this in the backyard quite a few times, as you can imagine. And it's just a wonderfully accurate little rifle. Nothing, nothing wanting. And we'll see whether I can reassemble it. So we, I think we have to open the action and then that cocks the action. And uh, these components, you can see those two hooks on the bottom. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But they fit inside, so you just have to fit it in and tip it upwards. So that was pretty smooth. And then insert the barrel into the receiver. And that's a tight fit. You, did, I don't know if you heard the click, but that's when you know you've got it right. Then this gets locked, and that's it. It's ready to go again. And of course, you need the magazine tube into the back, like the Browning. And it even has a um, knurled butt plate. So, just so that you're not thinking it's a defective gun or something, what happened is I test fired to make sure that the bullets were caught by my sand trap because we're sitting in a studio. And, and I did that and then I didn't lock this. Um, so there was a little bit more room for this last round so it, it didn't get chambered properly. Other than that, the gun's entirely reliable. In other words, operator error. So beautifully made. Um, I, I love the thing where you, the empties are saved for you. Uh, the stock's, I don't know, nothing to write home about, but it's serviceable beach or some birch or something, but it's fine. And it's got the wonderful BSA um, insignia on the, on the um, rear sight, and collectors look for that kind of thing. And if you're buying one of these, try to find one that's not refinished. In the meantime, I was looking on the web, and there are others around. Some of them obviously have seen a lot of use. And here's some kind of scope rail, but I probably won't put any kind of scope on this. It's just too handy and elegant the way it is. And where do you find an all steel and walnut um, rifle these days? Or I shouldn't say wal walnut beach or whatever it is, but it's wood. Uh, just a fantastic. And here's what you want to see on the side of the receiver. You can see the crossed rifles BSA and it probably says made in England there although I can't see it from this angle so there it is definitely the most unique uh, this is not a an Anschutz or any one of those they make a nice semi-auto or used to but it is something else quite quite a different bird and can't think of anything wrong with it actually some people don't like firing from an open bolt but I never had any problem with it that's it thank you very much for watching <laughs> Hope it's entertaining and we'll see you on the next video.